Jatwani and I work with CGAP. Um, I'd like to start by thanking Sankalp for hosting and Mandeshi for organizing this session. Joining me as panelists are Sairi Chahal of Shiro's, Rahul Gupta of Avanti Finance, Vanita Shinde of Mandeshi, and Shivnath Dukral of WhatsApp. In the interest of time, I'm not going to get into their backgrounds here, but I invite you to read about their experiences and their bios which um, are available on the session description through this event site. And we also want to ensure that all of your questions are being heard and addressed. So we've set aside a little bit of time to answer audience questions. I invite you to submit them through the chat function. And if you'd like to pose them to a specific panelist, please do mention that as part of the question. I'm really honored to be moderating this conversation on the digital gender divide and technology as an enabler for rural women micro entrepreneurs to improve their livelihoods. We have seen women leveraging technology to increase efficiencies around procuring supplies, conducting market research, marketing, reaching a wider audience, communicating with clients, making, receiving payments and so on, which has really helped them to grow their businesses. And our own work, CGAP's work on informal online commerce shows that micro entrepreneurs leverage social platforms to connect with potential buyers. And then they often move off those platforms, but continue to use technology and digital tools to finalize sales, arrange logistics and make payments. In often cases, this informal online commerce exists alongside formal e-commerce, but what stands out here is that women seem to prefer this mode. About 80% of both buyers and sellers through those informal online commerce sites tend to be women. And while this cuts across all income segments, it also includes low income women. It also includes women in rural areas, those engaged in handicrafts, for example. And so we see that technology is being used as a vehicle for livelihoods creation, and in some cases leading to deeper engagement with formal financial services. The flip side is that technology also has the potential to leave behind those that do not have access to these digital tools or cannot use them. And according to the GSMI Mobile Gender Gap Report 2020, about <clears throat> 51% of adult women in India own a mobile phone compared to 75% of men, while sm smartphone ownership is 16 and 37% respectively. And only 16% of women compared to 36% of men are mobile internet users. There's also a disparity between the usage of the phones with men in India on average engaging in seven use cases on a weekly basis compared to four for women. What is promising, however, is that the awareness of mobile internet has grown disproportionately for women and the gender gap in awareness has narrowed considerably. Women's awareness of mobile internet increased from 19% to 15% between 2017 and 2019. And I think that the work being done by the organizations represented on this panel illustrate the potential of technology as an enabler. So I'd like to kick off the session by playing a brief video put together by Mandeshi that speaks to how technology is enabling rural women to improve their livelihoods. Tanushri, can you please play the video now? It's on mute. Tanushri, we can't hear the video. Sorry, Lena, give me a second. I'll just try that again. Digital project, 
म्हणजे मुसगोड हा एरिया खूप रुरल एरिया आहे आणि या एरियामध्ये अशा वेळेला आहेत की फक्त त्यांना चूल आणि मूल यांच्या व्यतिरिक्त कोणत्याच गोष्टी शिकवल्या जात नाही त्यांना फक्त शेतातली कामे वगैरे करणे या सर्व गोष्टी शिकवल्या जातात आणि पैशाचे व्यवहार व्यवहार तर त्यांच्यापासून दूर दूर लांब लांब असतात मग अशा महिलांना आम्हाला ट्रेनिंग द्यायचं होतं ते पण डिजिटलचं ट्रेनिंग द्यायचं होतं मग आम्ही असं ठरवलं की आमच्याकडे एक डिजिटलचं बस आहे आणि त्या बसमध्ये एटीएमचं डेमो मशीन आहे आपण हे बस घेऊन त्यांच्यापर्यंत पोहोचायचं आणि त्या महिलांना एकत्रित करायचं आणि त्या महिलांना आपण डिजिटलचं ट्रेनिंग द्यायचं एटीएमचं ट्रेनिंग दिलं ऑनलाईन पेमेंट कसं करायचं ऑनलाईन शॉपिंग कशी करायची लायब्ररी कसं भरायचं डीटीएच रिचार्ज कसा करायचा मोबाईल रिचार्ज कसा करायचा या सगळ्या गोष्टींचं ट्रेनिंग दिलं आतापर्यंत आम्ही कमीत कमी सात हजार महिलांना डिजिटलचं ट्रेनिंग दिलेलं आहे अशा मध्येच या महिला आपला छोटा मोठा बिझनेस करत असतात जसं की टेलरिंग असेल पार्लर असेल किराणा शॉप असेल असे छोटे मोठे बिझनेस करत असतात या डिजिटलच्या ट्रेनिंगमुळे त्यांना या गोष्टीचा फायदा झाला की की त्यांना पहिलं कसं व्हायचं की त्यांना पैसे पाठवायचे किंवा काढायचे असेल तर खेड्यागावातून शहरात यावं लागायचं आणि त्यांचा पूर्ण दिवस वाया जायचा पण आता ट्रेनिंग घेतल्यानंतर आमची महिला ती शहरात येत नाही ती घर बसल्या टीव्ही बिल असेल मोबाईल रिचार्ज असेल टीव्ही रिचार्ज असेल किंवा पैसे पाठवणे असेल आपल्या बिझनेसमध्ये कोण कोणते ट्रान्झॅक्शन असेल ती घर बसल्या करते आणि अगदी पाच मिनिटात करते आणि जो हा वेळ वाचलेला आहे तो आपल्या बिझनेसला देते आणि या बिझनेसमधून ते महिला महिलेला खूप मोठा फायदा मिळतो दुसरी गोष्ट अशी आहे की आमची महिला आता पेन आणि डायरीचा वापर करत नाही की आपला जो रोजचे व्यवहार असतात ते लिहिण्यासाठी मेरा बिल ऍपचा वापर करते आता हा मेरा बिल ऍप काय आहे की आपले रोजचे जे व्यवहार असतात ते व्यवहार आपण डायरीतनं लिहिता मोबाईल तर आपल्या हातामध्ये असतो तर मोबाईलमध्येच त्या गोष्टींचं त्या रेकॉर्डर ठेवतो अशीच एक आमची मनीषा चिपल नावाची महिला आहे त्या महिलेने शेतात काम करत असताना गुगल मीट वरून ऑनलाईन ट्रेनिंग घेतलं आणि आज ती महिला मेरा बिल ऍपचा खूप छान पद्धतीने वापर करत आहे किराणा शॉप चालवणारी एक सुनीता मुकुळे नावाची महिला आहे नोटाच्या देवाणघेवाणीमुळे कोरोना पसरलो आणि ही गोष्ट खरी आहे त्यामुळे त्या महिलेने आपलं स्वतःचं दुकान बंद ठेवलं होतं पण त्या महिलेने तिथंच न थांबता क्यू आर कोडचा इतक्या छान पद्धतीने वापर करून तिने आपलं दुकानात बिझनेस करायला सुरुवात केली आणि चक्क एका महिन्यामध्ये सुनीता मुकुळे यांनी दोन लाख रुपयेचा बिझनेस केला दुसरी गोष्ट मला अजून एक अभिमानाने सांगावी वाटते की मनीषा तुकडे या ह्या एक आपल्या छोट्याशा गावातील महिला जेमतेम शिक्षण अगदी आठवी नव्हती या महिला महिलेने आपल्याकडे डिजिटलचं ट्रेनिंग घेतलं आणि आज त्या त्या गावातील पहिली डिजिटल महिला होण्याचा मान त्यांनी मिळवलेला आहे या सर्व गोष्टीचा आम्हाला खूप अभिमान वाटतो की मार्गदर्शन तर्फे आम्ही इतक्या छान पद्धतीने हा प्रोजेक्ट सगळ्या महिलांपर्यंत पोहोचवत आहे आणि आम्ही इतर महिलांनाही शिकवत आहे या गोष्टीचा आम्हालाही खूप अभिमान वाटतो आणि महिलांमध्ये जो आत्मविश्वास वाढलेला पाहून आमच्यामध्येही खूप आत्मविश्वास वाढतो Thank you, Tanushree. Um, so now I would like to invite each of the panelists to briefly share how they see their platforms or technologies using by, used by their organizations in playing a role in improving the livelihoods of rural women entrepreneurs. Uh, Vanita, let's start with you. So namaste and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Mangeshi works with the women entrepreneurs from the rural parts of Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Karnataka. At first, our women found using digital tools very challenging, but now they all have adopted very well in their businesses. Some of them even do not have their own smartphone, they use phones of their family members. Our experience, especially in the case of women entrepreneurs, is that if anything is helping them out to increase the sales of their business they are ready to do everything for example gajra is illiterate and she uses the microphone instead of typing for internet and youtube search whatsapp is the most used app amongst the digital tools 
as it's something women are most familiar with. One of our goat parents, Rajeshri, even helped the goat farmers to deliver a baby using WhatsApp video call. Ten thousand so of our women are using regular WhatsApp and WhatsApp business account to market and promote their products. See how the women thinks. Jyoti says, due to digital marketing, there is no limit to market your product. It builds a brand and also creates credit for your product. She says, I am proud to say that my products are online. It changes the way consumers look at you. Customers think that that if it is online, the products will definitely be good. Shobha, Shobha says, today I can order to the wholesaler sitting at home. I can send money online. The food the goods come at my door. All this boosts my confidence. It saves my time, which I can invest in business. She also added that since I started using digital banking, the money I had to pay to the broker was saved. We have a team of goat parents, and they have formed a WhatsApp group named Digital Animal Market. And around two thousand goat farmers are there. Who exchange their ideas, best practices, even they buy and sell their goats using this group. Same way, the use of Facebook page is also slowly growing as members are finding it easier to get customers from all over the world. Thousands of our women are also using Microsoft Skyzilla app. I would also like to add that tomorrow we we are going to launch Mandeshi e Bazaar. Online marketing platform for our women entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you, Vanita. Uh, maybe Sairi, you could go next. Sure. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Sairi, and I founded an organization called Shiros. And uh, we believe we are building what I call women's internet. And the uh, uh, idea is very simple: making internet work for women. And uh, uh, the two sort of context to our work. One is India is a country with the biggest gender gap, and we're also the country where the largest number of women graduates in the world. You know, and the other sort of metric is obviously we are now the country with perhaps the second or the third largest internet populations in the world. So uh, some of these are backdrops to the work. I started my company ten years ago, and barely ten million women were online. And today that number is perhaps you know three hundred million. And what we realize is there are four pillars of sort of building this whole thesis for women. One is identity. You know, I think uh, women's identity is a big part of I think bridging the gender gap. Uh, second is of course their networks. You know, we heard about the goat farmers, and I think for any ecosystem to grow, their their close networks have to grow. Well-being is a third part because women are still primary caregivers, and also. I think um, that's a focus area. You know, uh, these are things they care about, and fourth is of course access to money. And money is the stickiest glue in the mix. It it makes everything sort of work faster, better. And today we are a network of about 21 million women across our uh, properties. And women come to us. Uh, in fact, as a company, we have sort of stopped thinking about us as rural versus urban because we are finding that that gap is going. Uh, you know, it's bridging because you know a phone is a phone and a device is a device, and I think, uh, and that's really changing a lot of dynamics of how we're building this company. And we do feel that uh, there is an opportunity to bring about 100 million women online and uh, connect them to opportunities which are good for their personal growth, good good for you know them making incomes, and of course the biggest trend amongst all of that. Is micro entrepreneurship. So uh, yeah, so I'm excited to be here, and of course, this is the panel I'm going to take to my next investor pitch. Thank you, Sairi. <laughs> um, Shivnath, maybe we can hear from you next, please. Sure. Uh, thanks so much, and thanks to everyone. It's an honor to speak at a forum like this, and I'm extremely humbled by Vanita Ji's stories because while we work very closely with Mandeshi and we hear these stories, but for her to narrate it. It's a completely different experience. So I'll tell you um, uh, when I heard these stories, I just one thing keeps ringing in my head about the way WhatsApp tries to uh, look at our uh, entire user base, uh, completely resting on three pillars. And I think Vanita Ji's story is kind of 
uh, portrays those three pillars, which is being simple, being reliable, and being scalable. And I think all those three fundamental pillars address the kind of issues that Vintaji talked about, that it is simple to use. And hence, uh, we believe that when a technology is built in a, a manner that everybody can use it across gender, across economic class, across geographies, across literacy levels, that is when the success of the product kind of defines itself. So I think that is what has proven in our experience working with uh, Mandeshi Foundation as well, where we train uh, hundreds of women uh, in each of these sessions on skilling, on uh, how to use the SMB app to increase their market share. As Vinita ji said, uh, the goat market story is, is a fascinating one. I mean, just goes to show how intelligently it can be deployed if your approach is to do problem solving. Also, I would say the scalability part of it. Some of the fundamental issues that we feel WhatsApp we can solve uh, is looking at financial inclusion. We believe that WhatsApp can be the digital cost viability of financial services companies. It can solve for people who have no access to these financial products. For example, uh, our uh, country head, uh, Abhijit Bose, spoke at an event just a few days ago where he showcased how a pension, a micro pension, can be uh, sold to a last mile customer within seven minutes. So fundamentally speaking, WhatsApp's ability to solve for some of these fundamental issues and then work with the entire financial ecosystem uh, makes it a very powerful tool. And I think we can address the whole gender gap issues based on that as well. Thank you, Shubhnak. Um, last but not least, Rahul, love to hear from you. Yeah, hello everyone. And thanks for having me on the panel. It's an honor being part of this group. Uh, so Avanti is uh, a financial inclusion platform, which is essentially being created with the transformational vision of making financial services affordable and accessible to the tens of millions of people in India who are not part of the formal uh, financial services system. So we have about 120 million households in India who are still relying on informal credit. And that's the problem that we're trying to solve. And this is all done through a digital delivery model. Uh, but what might be useful to share with this group is that our model is also based on an assisted mode. Uh, what we do realize is that women entrepreneurs who need access to affordable credit to build out their own small micro businesses, uh, a lot of them they don't have smartphones. So the option of self-serving or going online to avail of a loan uh, wasn't an option. And that's where what we have done is curated partnerships with very deeply entrenched uh, community partners who understand the community, understand the needs of the community. And through our app, what they do is they onboard our users, 80% of the users we serve are women in rural locations. So it's helping them access to technology in an assisted way, which ultimately also helps them get access to the micro credit that they're looking for. So the way it works is our partners, agents will provide literally doorstep service to these women, which takes away a lot of friction. There is no paper involved. Uh, there is the identity layer is established through Aadhaar. There are biometrics involved and the whole process doesn't take more than 15 minutes or so. And then because uh, everybody pretty much has a bank account nowadays, the funds are remitted directly to the account within a couple of days. And then we also encourage people through uh, financial literacy programs through our partners that they do have the option of repaying uh, their installments, which might be at a weekly, fortnightly, or a monthly basis in a digital manner. Uh, so that option also exists. So what you do is you take away friction in terms of the process. Uh, you make it accessible through a partner, which is really the assisted mode. And it takes away the whole time that traditional lending institutions have taken. And ultimately, all of this is good for their business. So hopefully, it ushers in some economic prosperity as well. Thank you. Um, so, Vanita, I mean, I understand Mandeshi runs a digital literacy program for the women, 
And um, can you tell us a little bit about what the impact of that digital literacy program has been on the adoption of digital technologies by your women entrepreneurs? So uh, currently we are working in three states of India and the contexts in all these areas are different and we always design and deliver the programs according to the needs of our community. Our uniqueness is that whatever we provide, whether it is banking services, business management training, we provide at women's stores. We have designed a bus, especially for digital literacy program which travel to different villages and trainings are conducted at the doorstep. We have LCD TV and a demo ATM machine is also installed in the bus. Manisha, who cultivates pomegranates, she said, I practiced 20 times on your ATM machine until I had the confidence to handle the machine. After the training, she performs all transactions related to agriculture activity digitally. She taught digital banking to the main in her village. She says this with a pride that she is the first woman farmer in her block who does transactions online. Another example is Anjali, a housewife from Lagu. She received training in the month of March immediately started her spice business in the lockdown. Purchased machinery for spices. It was the April and May month, main season for spice business. Monday she provided whole marketing linkage support to her and currently she is earning 40,000 rupees monthly. She has her own brand named Dambuaji Masala. She also received order of rupees 50,000 from Hyderabad and she has also received another big order of rupees 15 lakh in October month. Immediately, she has hired 40 women to meet the demand and successfully completed the order. Recently, she has purchased land at MIDC area and wished to convert her small business into factory. I would also like to add that a training on financial tool is playing an instrumental role in helping women to manage their finances in much better way. I could not believe how women would understand all these commercial terms, but now I really wonder when I see them using it. They study every aspect of the financial world. Now they understand their business better than before. They understand where I spend more, where I spend less. Is my business running at a loss or profit? They are also curious as in which business I have earned the most if I have two businesses. And they look so closely that they say, your tool does not tell me which of my products makes more profit. Another woman said that I cannot see the stock statement of my business. Then how can I prove to the bank manager? that I have such a big turnover and you can give me a loan. Women are smart, very smart. Thank you. Thank you. No doubt about women being smart and, you know, <laughs> taking advantage of all the tools that they have available to them. Um, Sairi, I know you mentioned that um, you don't, you're already bridging the rural uh, urban gap and uh, but even then, I know Shiro's your rural women user base is growing. And um, I'm just curious to know a little bit about what the unique needs of rural women are and how your platform is kind of well positioned or well placed to meet those needs. Right. So I think uh, one of the uh, interesting lessons we learned while building Shiro's was uh, you know, women have existed in communities across India for a long time, and these are Anganwadi groups, microfinance groups, self-help groups, uh, and women only is a real behavior, you know, even in weddings, women eat separately and men eat separately, so there is a certain offline behavior that's for real, so, uh, and uh, one of the things that that's really popular as a feature is that Shiro's is a women only space, you know, and uh, that itself kind of offers uh, exactly the same safety and trust that they have in offline groups. Uh, the other thing that's happening is 
uh, you know, uh, rural also has many textures. So when, uh, when we say rural, a lot of women on our system today are coming from small talukas, small districts, peri-urban areas, uh, you know, also, of course, uh, you know, really far flung areas. But the thing that's common amongst all of them is that they've had so, some exposure, you know, whether it is an exposure to a smartphone in their village or in their panchayat or, uh, or you know, their children. Uh, and of course, I think the other sort of trigger is, uh, look, most, most women know that uh, their dependence on the formal sector for job opportunities or for income opportunities is much, much lower, or at least their likelihood of getting that opportunity is much lower. And that's what's driving a lot of women to become micro entrepreneurs. You know, so the estimates say that today, the 15, 16 million micro entrepreneurs this country has will become 35 million in the next three to four years. Uh, and that that also brings in additional direct and indirect economy of about 150 to 170 million women who are engaged in entrepreneurial pursuits and employ, you know. So it's literally what, what we call a she economy, right? It's, 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 there is a, there's an undercurrent of this building up. And internet's the biggest enabler, right? The enabler is because women are, uh, you know, sort of finding all the means that could help them set up a business, grow a business, but, the other notable point that we've learned is when when these women are coming online, actually, you know, and when they become part of a community or a group, they're bringing all of their lives together. They're not sort of segregating, you know, and and that's that's really a big behavioral shift that you know our platform allows them to you know find health advice, to speak to a counselor, to find like-minded women also to share selfies and content, uh, buy and sell. So it's really a safe space to hang out and bring in all of their li lives. And that's a big trigger because uh, it reduces dissonance. It, it sort of creates a sense of safety. And I think that's that's big, a big, big pull. Uh, when when the lockdown started, we saw a surge of, you know, we run, a, we run a helpline and there are counselors available. You can speak to a counselor. And we saw a big surge in queries around abuse and violence and, you know, domestic situations. And again, I think, and, and these are women from really far flung areas. We don't even know how we're getting discovered. But the truth is there is there is a lot of word of mouth going around to say, hey, I'm a woman. I got help here. Why don't you also get it from here? And I think uh, that's what's driving a lot of the narrative. So the relationship of women with us is not super transactional. It, it's actually one that of trust and safety. And from there stems everything else, you know, their ability to buy and sell, their ability to, you know, hang out or their ability to create content or to find a loan. Everything else transpires once trust is established. And as a platform, we also optimize for trust because, uh, you know, that's, that's really the glue that keeps it together. And the other sort of a uh, piece we realize is that a lot of women are uh, are you know they 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 speak in their own languages so we multilingual you know being able to sort of find somebody who speaks their own language has similar sort of challenges but maybe not exactly in the same village but maybe the next one or you know in a different different district that makes a lot of difference that that hey internet is now multilingual and you know and there are only women here uh, that's a lot of comfort and trust to build in. Thank you, Sairi. Yeah, I think your point on, you know, kind of the trust and the comfort level that goes with that trust being a huge driver of behavior change is just evident across all sorts of behavior change that's required. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And, uh, um, and you had also mentioned that... Uh, the lack of opportunities in the formal sector is what's driving a lot of these women to be entrepreneurs. And that's a good segue to my next question for Shivnath. Um, what's up being the most widely used platform in India? I know you have a lot of women um, entrepreneurs on there using what's up and you know, just some insights on how women in particular are using it, if they're using it differently from men to grow their businesses would be interesting to hear. Shivna? 
we lose him? Okay, I'll come back to Shivnath. Um, Rahul, you had uh, mentioned earlier, um, I think one of the most, one of the interesting aspects of Avanti Finance is this um, model of working with your partners on the ground that have the knowledge and the insights into the customers and their needs and your model provides this handholding that they need to participate in a platform like yours, which is fully digital. Um, so how have you seen, you know, kind of the evolution of their journeys in the digital realm, having had these people, trusted people in their community to handhold them as they maybe began their journey with technology and, uh, you know, into formal financial services in some of these cases? So it's uh, super encouraging. And the pace of adoption of uh, digital uh, is amazing. And as someone, one of the fellow panelists had said before, if it helps solve for something, if it helps them enhance their livelihoods, people are, there are many use cases we have across the country where people quickly, um, you know, went up the learning curve on digital, started uh, getting conversant with the app, started making repayments for their loans, et cetera, through their phone. Lots of very, very encouraging examples. I think what also uh, encourages us is the hyper-local inputs that come from the community and women entrepreneurs themselves in terms of the kind of products that are fit and proper for them. So we're right now, uh, one of our products is, uh, you know, the small size loans that we give, the average ticket size somewhere around 50,000 rupees. Uh, but the mood point there is that the inputs that come from the women which has an element of crowdsourcing where these entrepreneurs would say, I am getting into dairy farming and I would like to, you to support us with an affordable loan product, but you have to be mindful of the fact that by the time we start selling the milk, et cetera, it could be a couple of months. So the livelihoods don't kick in. So your product should have some kind of a moratorium built in. And therefore, the repayment schedules that you build should mirror our cash flows. Now, that's where we have designed our technology to be very, very flexible and taken a path that we don't want to go standardization, but we want to go hyper-local and be very, very flexible. What it does is we get the inputs from the women entrepreneurs through our partners. We design products that resonate with them. And then what happens is that we also see very, very encouraging behavior in terms of repayments, et cetera, because essentially you're not pushing out something that you have, but you have taken their feedback upfront. And that's where, again, the role of technology plays a big uh, part. Uh, and just in terms of people going up on the literacy curve on uh, digital, uh, it's, as I mentioned before, it's super encouraging. Thank you. Shivnath, I see you're back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lost you. Sorry we missed for you for a bit. No, off, yeah. no problem. Um, so, um, WhatsApp being the most widely used platform in India has obviously a lot of women uh, users as well. And we'd love to hear a little bit about how the women, especially in rural areas, are using WhatsApp to grow their businesses. Sure. Uh, uh, thanks so much, Lena. Again, sorry for that. Uh, I got dropped off. Um, I, I see Chetna on the call and I, I wanted to start off by uh, saying something that Chetna always shares that uh, don't make poor solutions for poor people. And I, I always get inspired by it because that just goes fundamentally to prove why technology has to stop looking at the lens which divides us rather than look at something which gets us together. I think that's the most fundamental uh, solutioning principle uh, that WhatsApp works on. Now, when I look at how uh, we have women entrepreneurs or women's groups working on it, we have millions of stories, but our experience, especially with Mandeshi, uh, in bringing uh, to them the digital baby program, which we launched with the CSC, uh, with the government of India, just goes to prove how in a short span of time, and COVID was a good um, way for us to learn about this. In a short span of time, we saw women entrepreneurs, uh, especially with Mandeshi, switch their ability to recreate businesses. 
there's one very um, uh, nicely told story of Mandashi Foundation, which we feel very good about. I think uh, one of their members used to make uh, either clothing or something to do with textiles. And suddenly because of the lockdown, her market got shut down, but she repurposed her raw material to start making masks and rediscovered her markets using WhatsApp. Now, to me, uh, if your distribution channel is agnostic to the business model, that is the best way for a technology to prove its metal, I think. And, and to us, what uh, these kind of studies prove to us is that it, it is women who uh, made this switch. It is women who made this recalibrated business model. It is women who discovered the need to identify new markets to sell at completely different wear uh, from their uh, raw material. Uh, and to me, I think uh, WhatsApp's ability to make that connection that easily to help identify what the opportunities are despite facing adversity, I think that's the beauty of it. The other thing which I uh, feel personally very good about because I've been involved with the CSC project and we are bringing that uh, digital baby program to Mandeshi members as well is skill building. Uh, and I think um, using WhatsApp video and WhatsApp product rollouts have just started and we're going to innovate much more. You saw some of the commerce solutions being launched uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think for women entrepreneurs, especially, this is going to be a huge opportunity to actually tell us what they need it, rather than we deciding what product uh, we think they need. And I think our working with organization like Mandashi teaches us, uh, tells us what can be done. Video calling on WhatsApp, by the way, as we increase the number of people who use uh, video calling on WhatsApp, is a big push for skill building because we can run these skill building classes. The whole technical education framework, if you see, can shift to this kind of a platform and can just kind of go on to 400 million people. And then when you look at the opportunity set of the uh, bottom 200 to 300 million people and WhatsApp's ability to work on uh, expanding that, uh, I mean, it, it's unlimited, the potential of empowering more and more women. And again, uh, we all know we are waiting for the WhatsApp pay approval. If that comes through, Lena, I think the seamlessness of all these uh, different modules, what are being deployed WhatsApp, uh, it can be a game changer. Thank you, Shivnath. I really like that story about how WhatsApp is really enabling these resilient women to just do more and more. Um, so, Vanita, I, you know, there's a lot of a lot of you are engaged in digital literacy programs. And in your case um, as well, I'd love to hear what the impact of your digital literacy program, oh, sorry, sorry, Vanita. Um, your digital literacy programs have already kind of induced huge behavior change. Um, and you work with a lot of women that have typically preferred kind of manual processes and cash over digital payments. Um, but there are kind of barriers in enabling behavior change. So what do you see as some of those major barriers around behavior change that um, are required to embrace digital technologies among the women that you work with? Yeah, uh, yes, women face several barriers, mostly uh, related to their self-confidence. For example, by learning digital modes of payments, women are concerned that they can lose their money. And our team has several ways to address this. They started sending one rupee to the credit account and asked her to send a rupee back. As this is a small amount, women are ready to try this exercise multiple times to make sure that they are doing it right. Another challenge is that women often don't own smartphones. So they don't know how to make online payments through a mobile wallet. Many of them do not have control of their own bank accounts, making it difficult to have independent control of their own expenses. Women live far away from a bank branch, so it's expensive, uh, expensive to travel and access cash, make payments. To help these women who live in most remote locations, we started a program called Digital Bidis. Digital Bidis travel from village to village to encourage and train women to take control of their own digital mobility. And another issue is low connectivity in rural areas. This means uh, delaying receiving messages, slowing down the selling process, and finally losing customers. 
also the children's classes are now online so women are always the last to be able to use the family phone even when women entrepreneurs have their own phones if another family member needs the phone she has to hand it over of course this impacts her business our women are very familiar and comfortable with whatsapp groups they are very keen to reduce their risk especially when it comes to their everyday sales and receiving payments for example they take a photo of whatsapp conversations until a payment is made and product is delivered they always ask us why there is a limit on whatsapp groups for all these women need to have their own phones and control over their own finances and as i mentioned this access is limited thank you thank you vanita um and now sairi what you know you said uh, one of the pillars is access to money um through your platform that you um so what has been the impact of this access to credit and other financial services that women are getting through your platform on them and their livelihoods right so um, one of our our sort of uh, you know our, you know things that we that we see is that uh when it comes to women and i think mandi she's adopted that model well seva did that beautifully in the offline world i think uh when when it comes to money it's not just the money actually it's not just the act of applying for a loan it's the whole relationship with money how do i first uh find a way to make money and of course a lot of these opportunities are emerging micro entrepreneurial opportunities uh you know a lot of uh products being sold online sold on digital platforms and of course you know uh, micro services right from tailoring to stitching to you know uh textiles food a lot of these uh, are are being you know uh, uh you know are, are are part of part of the work that women do but the way we look at money is that it's not it's basically employment which is typically you know uh, gig work or you know work as it comes in batches uh, uh there is micro entrepreneurship which is a small shop a small business a non gst business typically or a small business where the difference between savings account and current account actually doesn't exist it just is a, a bank account and the third is access to credit which is typically again the line between what is working credit uh and what is uh you know a loan is sort of blurred so for example i want to buy a computer because uh it's going to help me in many things or i want to buy a low uh, a smartphone loan or i want to buy a buy a scooty and i think these are sort of uh you know very common ask because these are all enabling enabling loans and we're seeing a growth of those and then of course uh growth loans i want to buy more inventory i want to buy uh, i want to put a board outside my beauty parlor i want to buy a machine for my stitching workshop equipment loans uh, working capital loans so we see a huge demand but also i think uh you know personal loans personal uh, savings products to say hey i want to set up a, a fund for my daughter i want to save for a house or i want to save for x so these are sort of very common demands that we see and and the way we look at this is when we look at a financial need we don't look at an isolation we look at look at it in relation with their entire footprint on our platform how long have they been with us uh, you know are they an active user are they a net giver or a net taker a very community community metric we use and then of course you know what is uh, what is the depth of their relationship with this community and that allows them to sort of really work within these you know non technical blurred lines because again the trust factor comes in is a you know literally they have a relationship with every user and that's that relationship is extracted to offer credit because a lot of a lot of this credit score doesn't exist on seller and experian it doesn't exist on bureaus a lot of this is relationship in nature but it's also community in nature to say hey uh, you know so we also test uh group models to say hey like if this woman took the loan can two of you guarantee her so again taking a lot from the offline playbook you know these models are tried and tested but you know sort of 
just bringing them more online, making them easier. Obviously, WhatsApp is a big tool. UPI is a big tool. And I think these are these are the small innovations. Keep the trust and bring in the tech. You know, that's that's really our formula. Thank you, Sairi. And I also like kind of the holistic view of that you're taking just of the person within the community and then their overall financial needs, not because it's difficult to kind of segregate into personal versus business. Um, Shibnath, I understand that you are working with Mandeshi, among others, to kind of train rural women specifically on the use of the SMB app. And I'd like to hear a little bit about how that, I guess, I'm assuming most of them moved from the standard app to the SMB app and what that's meant in terms of transformation yes. of their businesses. Yes, uh, we never had to luckily train them on the P2P app, the person to person app, thankfully. Uh, that was already uh, highly adopted. Uh, what we discovered is we worked with our internal business teams to uh, run these training programs and we re realized that how uh, fast they switched because they realized that they could deploy their business better on the SMB app in terms of showcasing the product, the catalog, or uh, uh, even customer management in a lot of ways. And the SMB app is where a lot of the focus of the product teams are also going to go into. And I think that opened up a whole new world for some of these businesses. That is one. The second is uh, what we also discovered is that even the smallest, uh, simplest, uh, and the range going up to bigger and a little more complex businesses uh, started adopting it. So a lot of our training program, programs is working on that. Uh, interestingly, Bandesh is also a very key, and uh, if I may, on behalf of Chetna, talk about uh, to figure out how to use the business API. And I know Rahul is on the call, and we're trying to uh, see if we can solve that problem for them as well or not. The API is, is a much more um, uh, slightly advanced, uh, works at a different scale. That is a different kind of a thing. And Mandeshi could uh, look at different kind of solutions where all the members could come together and cater to different customers using a single API number. So imagine Mandeshi having a single number and any customer who wants to buy from a Mandeshi member converse with that number and start purchasing things uh, using the API. So it's like a chatbot based uh, uh, API solution. Uh, irrespective, what we have realized working with Mandeshi is that their women entrepreneurs are extremely eager and keen to solve for their business needs. And uh, I heard some of the previous panelists talking about uh, them not having access to a phone. Uh, and I think Chetna is already working on solution how, how to, and that too with RBI, how to make a, a loan for a phone, uh, make, more, make it more viable so that they can start owning their own feature phone, uh, smartphone to run these businesses. But if you look at it beyond uh, even this kind of uh, challenge that we all need to overcome, Lena, is the question of how it has proven that it is the women who are taking the lead in adopting it. It isn't the man of the house who are saying, oh, let me do the business for you. Let me run the SMB app for you. It is the women who are wanting to get trained to learn about the SMB app. So that's one big revelation. I also heard about digital payments. Imagine with that phone, and uh, hoping that WhatsApp pay happens soon, their ability to ma make money move is going to go up tremendously. And the moment they see that they're able to pay, they're able to receive, the mobility of money will make it far more empowering. Right now, the experience may be because we don't have WhatsApp pay integrated, but imagine the seamlessness of it and them feeling the, and that wholesome experience of doing a business transaction is, is so much more uh, empowering. I sometimes feel that, you know, I mean, the entire challenge in this space is at the end of the day is about us. It is not about the women entrepreneurs. It is about our ability to deliver to them uh, more and more solutions based on their learnings. And I think that's where we all need to focus on just like the way from a connectivity point of view, the challenges, uh, as somebody said, data connectivity, access to phones, et cetera. But in terms of solutioning, the challenge is on all the entire ecosystem uh, running these companies to say, what more can we do? Imagine that entire segment of population coming into the GDP cycle. What would it mean for India today? Which in some way is not getting captured. Thank you, Shivnath. I agree that, you know, um, if there's, if the people see a need for a product, they're gonna adopt it. There's no training required. And I think there's a lot more that needs to be done on the part of the providers 
to kind of design with kind of the needs of the women, I mean, or any segment really, because they are hungry for more and more and more. Um, Rahul, you know, Avanti Finance, I think is set to disrupt the entire microcredit space and the whole um, dichotomy, I guess, of the technology with the handholding is very interesting. And I think that's what's really gonna, not the handholding, but the assisted, I guess it's um, really revolutionary in some ways. And I know you spoke a little bit about how your partners on the ground are helping you kind of design the products to fit the needs of the people that you're serving. But you know, what's also the role of technology in enabling the design and then also the delivery along with this kind of high touch or hand holding model um, in terms of getting those products really into the hands of the underserved or the unserved? So Lena, if you look at it, I mean, essentially our, our DNA is of a livelihood company. What we're trying to do is, you know, provide these loans to uh, people who are unserved and underserved by the formal, formal financial system. Uh, so their livelihoods can increase by a factor of at least two. I mean, that's our goal. That our loans have not hit and run, but every loan that we give from Avanti should actually be an impact story in the lives of our borrowers, 80% of whom are women, as we mentioned. Now, in terms of technology, I mean, so technology is sort of the enabler here. And what it helps to do is one, if you're going to reach out to the underserved people, you have to have a model that not only enables access, but enables access at a very affordable cost. As we all know today, informal sources today are either very inconvenient or very expensive. And how do you ensure that credit is uh, made affordable, which what does it do essentially? What does affordable credit mean? It means that people plow it into their businesses and therefore they make good returns out of the businesses. And it's not that the returns on the businesses are being completely eroded by the interest that they're paying of the loan that they're doing. So we're very mindful of that. And therefore the link of the link to increasing the livelihoods or the income that people uh, earn. That's sort of one. The second thing is taking away the friction. I mean, today, entrepreneurs, you know, time is at a premium. And if you really look at it, things have really improved in the country. And that's where the digital infrastructure of India helps, where what we're trying to do is make sure that the process is as frictionless as possible. Money comes to the entrepreneurs or the women, at, you know, very, very quickly so that they can deploy it into their businesses. And it's not coming at a time where the need for it has dissipated. And then of course, making the whole sort of cycle of repayments and all match with the cash flows. So essentially if you put all of that together, what we're trying to do is play a role in empower, empowering the women entrepreneurs to just make their own lives better, to have sustainable livelihoods. And that's sort of our uh, contribution. So whether we, how much we disrupt the market, I mean, time will tell. Our idea is to be able to play a part uh, in serving the 120 million households or so which are unserved. And we don't intend, we don't think we can do it ourselves. Our, and the, that's the reason why we built a platform where we can partner with other financial institutions, other MFIs, uh, where, and we even today, our partnerships extend beyond networks of VCs, ag tech players, uh, NGOs, uh, social businesses, et cetera. And the idea is we are, uh, our digital spine can be made uh, open to other financial institutions, MFIs, et cetera, uh, as long as the purpose of getting affordable capital is going to the people who need it the most, then we think we have uh, made a difference and we are being true to our vision. Thank you. Um, yeah, the power of partnerships and kind of technology and handholding together, I think is gonna go a long way. I've just been told that we don't have time for questions from the audience. So I apologize to the audience, but uh, before closing, I'd like to ask our panelists um, 
very briefly, like 30 seconds on what you see as being the biggest remaining challenge to narrowing the digital gender divide and how optimistic are you that uh, India will solve those challenges? Vanita, let's start with you. So we face several challenges such as not having proper network to use digital tools. So we introduced Liza Lab, which can be used in 2G network services. Many women had no balance in their phones to attend the trainings. We provide the mobile recharges. It took time for many learners to start using this, all this unfamiliar practice, but it was quite useful and women are happily using it. As the physical appearances and the trainings aren't possible during COVID, and this was the stressful situation for our women, Monday she used Google Meet, Zoom, WhatsApp to provide trainings and also came up with an idea and introduced MobiMook mobile app learning platform for our women. Even our Marx initiative is a successful example. With the support of all virtual training, our women made 800,000 soft masks and sold it to the medicals, government hospitals, government offices, corporate companies, and MIDC companies. In all this exercise, uh, we see the main challenge is not having smartphone for women. And I would like to say that current picture is one household, one phone. We should be changed as per woman for smartphone. Thank you. Thank you, Vanita. Over to you, Sari. All right. So I think just two simple sort of, I think, uh, way to look at this. I think ecosystems grow when uh, their access to capital grows. So I think uh, we can we can build all policy I want we want, but uh, you know if if we do not give a special focus to increasing women's access to capital across the layers, you know, not just microfinance, but I think uh, for small and medium businesses, growing businesses, access to, uh, you know, all forms of capital. And I think this needs to be a consistent theme in our, in our gender policy making as well as in, in our macro theme as we want to be, you know, the $5 trillion economy that, that we hope to be at some point. And the other theme of course is increasing the net of digital inclusion, you know, so easy uh, internet, easier access to phones, uh, you know, continues to be a theme and given, given uh, you know, in a post-COVID world, this this is not going to go away. And I think as a country, we need to sort of work on it. The great thing is uh, we we have figured out a playbook, the India stack playbook, the UPI playbook, the health stack, the insurance stack. So there, there are these playbooks which are very India first, and now they're going to go, go global from here. So I think just adding more, 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 uh, feed to these uh, playbooks as well as the macro story of digital inclusion and access to capital viable. Thank you, Sairi. Uh, Shivna, you wanna go next? Sure, very quickly. I, you know, Lina, I, I see this question more from a social lens and I think uh, at the end of the day, if India has to get onto the whole $5 trillion, $20 trillion, $25 trillion uh, benchmark, we really need to look at or recognize that women can do, will, and have contributed. And I think that's the bigger lens that I look at it from the recognition. Everybody has to respect and recognize that this is what they can do. We do not need to experiment anymore. That's my uh, biggest, I think it's a, it's a mindset challenge. That's number one. Number two, the technical challenge is obviously clear that technology cuts across every class or divide that we know of, gender, e economics, education, geography, anything. And I think the only way to solve for that is make technology simple, usable, acceptable, uh, and make it a part of their life in a way that they think that business is not the barrier because technology will enable them to achieve those business goals. Thank you, Shivnath. And Rahul? I think it's been covered. Uh, I'd just like to reiterate the fact that uh, if in rural locations, if women are only 10 to 15% of the overall people who use the internet, I mean, that's got to change. Mm. Uh, and it's not only access to the internet, it's access to the right tools that make them aware of their rights, uh, gives them access to tools that helps them in their lives, in their businesses, and uh, innovations that happen today normally tend to be 
uh, around the top 100 million households in uh, India. And that's where you can sort of monetize it. And there are commercial considerations behind. Uh, and even if you look at uh, payment gateways like UPI, it's, you know, it's a fantastic product. And we all know what a runaway success it's been. Uh, but it's still the usage of it at the moment is currently, you know, amongst the top 100, 120 million people. So I think it'll be a combination of factors as the proliferation of smartphones increases, uh, as uh, the access from a social perspective also increases for women on the internet, uh, you know, giving them access to the right content. Uh, then, you know, that's when you really sort of unleash the whole power of it and where innovations also have to start catering to the bottom of the pyramid of the 100, 120 million households that are not served today. Yeah. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you to all of my panelists here. Um, I'm sorry once again to the audience that we didn't have time to get to your questions. But, uh, you know, I think it was a really interesting um, conversation. And I think there's a lot, you know, that can be seen through the work of all the organization or all of your organizations that these women are resilient they're um, more than ready to run with what they have to um, make the most of their lives grow their businesses try out new things but we do have some big challenges that still need to be overcome mind shift changes whatnot but uh, it seems that you know, we are headed in the right direction. And there's reason that I believe we can be optimistic that uh, technolo technology will serve as kind of an enabler and do its bit to narrow the divide. So thank you to the audience. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you once again to Mandeshi and Sankalp. And I apologize, we've gone over time. <laughs>